Meet Brooks, an up-and-coming solo out on a job with her partner Bouncer. Fabian hired to retrieve some files locked away on a forgotten server in an abandoned house on the edge of Night City. The good news? They found the house. The bad news? The house is smack in the middle of Bozo territory. The Bozos are a poser gang who do everything they can to look, act, and live every moment of every day as clowns. And if you think that makes them sound utterly twisted, you'd be right. At the moment, Brooks is standing guard while Bouncer, a netrunner, plugs into the server and downloads the files. The GM decides now is a good time to ask Brooks for a skill check. To make a skill check in Cyberpunk 2020, you roll a 10 set of die and add the rankings for the appropriate statistic and skill to the roll to get the total. The GM compares this to the difficulty. If your total is equal to or higher than the roll, you succeed. Otherwise, you fail. The GM has decided a bozo is patrolling just outside the house Brooks and Bouncer are in and asks Brooks to make a skill check to see if she hears the ganger. Brooks rolls 1d10 and gets a 2. She adds this to her intelligence of 6 and her awareness notice of 6 for a total of 14. She also adds a modifier because of her combat sense. Modifiers are bonuses or penalties added to your skill check because of certain circumstances. Some are environmental in nature. For example, if you're trying to repair a bike but you don't have the right tools, you might have a negative 3 modifier to your check. Other times, modifiers are based on equipment or character-specific traits. As a solo, Brooks has a special ability called Combat Sense. She adds her ranks in Combat Sense to our Awareness Notice skill when trying to perceive danger. Brooks has a Combat Sense of 5, so that gets added to make the total 19. Unfortunately, the GM decides hearing the clown's approach is a difficult task because of the background noise from the nearby highway. He sets the difficulty at 20. Brooks fails and doesn't notice the soft squeak of the bozo shoes as he approaches the house and enters so she doesn't have time to prepare an ambush. Cyberpunk 2020 uses the Friday Night Firefight system for combat. It's fast, furious, and built on real-world data. It's often deadly, usually intense, and always starts with initiative. A round of combat lasts roughly three seconds in Cyberpunk 2020, and each character in the fight gets a turn. Reaction speed is critical, being the first to squeeze the trigger can be the difference between being alive or dead when a round ends. To figure out who goes and in what order during a combat round, we roll initiative. To determine initiative, everyone involved rolls 1d10 and adds their reflex. Combat proceeds from highest to lowest. The initiative can be modified by a solo's combat sense, different types of cyberware, and certain drugs. For initiative, Brooks rolls 1d10 for 6 and adds her reflex of 9. She also adds plus 5 for her combat sense, and another plus 1 because she has a piece of cyberware known as a Kereznikov booster plugged into her brain. Her total is 21. The GM rolls 1d10 for the bozo and gets a 4. He adds the bozo's reflex of 7. The bozo also has a piece of cyberware called speedware, which he activates before going into the house. That gives him a plus 3 to initiative for 5 rounds. The bozo's total is 14. Brooks goes first, and she isn't fooling around. She knows she has to put this bozo down and fast before more of his gang shows up and she's overwhelmed. She's armed with a Militech Arms Avenger, a medium pistol, which she already has unholstered and ready to go. On a character's turn, they can perform one action without penalty. Actions include moving up to your full movement rate, firing a number of times equal to your ranged weapon's rate of fire, making a melee attack, dodging to make yourself harder to hit in melee, parrying to deflect incoming melee attacks, escaping a hold or trap, aiming to get a bonus of plus one on your next shot, reloading or changing your weapon, mounting or dismounting from a vehicle, repairing an item or giving medical aid, performing any other skill check which can be accomplished in three seconds. Saying a few words doesn't count as an action, especially if there's something cool like a catchphrase or a quip. Brooks chooses the most simple and logical action, she fires up to her pistol's rate of fire, which is two shots, and has to make a skill check for each shot to see if it hits. For the first shot, Brooks rolls 1d10 for a 7, and adds a reflex of 9 and her handgun skill of 7. She also has a smart gun link, a cybernetic implant which sinks her gun to her brain and increases her accuracy. This gives her a modifier of plus 2 for a total of 25. The difficulty for hitting an opponent with a range attack depends on their distance from you. The bozo is within close range for Brooks's pistol, so the difficulty is 15. She easily makes it. 
Damage for a ranged attack is determined using the following formula. Base weapon damage, minus armor, minus body type modifier. Let's see it in action. First, Brooks rolls the damage for her pistol, 2d6 plus 1. She rolls a 4 and a 6, plus 1, and that's a total of 11. Then she rolls to determine where the shot hit. This is important because characters sometimes wear different levels of armor on different parts of their body. The bozo, for example, is obviously not wearing a helmet. Brooks rolls 1d10, scores a 3, and compares it to the location chart on her character sheet. That's a torso hit. Brooks fires her pistol and hits the bozo smack dab in the center of his mass. Now, that bozo may look like a clown, but he's not entirely stupid. He's wearing a Kevlar vest beneath his rags. That's got a stopping power, or SP, of 10. That absorbs a lot of the damage, reducing it from 11 to 1. Then we have to look at the body type modifier. Characters are rated as very weak, weak, average, strong, very strong, or superhuman depending on their body stat. After armor is figured in, damage can be further reduced by the body type modifier to reflect a character's stamina and general toughness. With a body of 8, the bozo is considered strong. Normally this would reduce the damage by a negative 3, but since damage which penetrates armor can never be reduced below 1, the bozo still takes one full point of damage. The GM checks off one box on the <gasps> bozo's damage track. He is now considered lightly wounded. In addition, whenever damage penetrates armor, it degrades the armor and reduces its SP by 1. The bozo's Kevlar vest drops from an SP of 10 to an SP of 9. A character's wound level matters. Light wounds don't penalize a character, but higher level ones do. Having a serious wound applies a negative 2 penalty to all reflex actions. A critical wound reduces reflex, intelligence, and cool by one half rounded up. A mortal wound reduces reflex, intelligence, and cool by two-thirds rounded up. The more damage you take, the harder it is to do things. One of the differences between Friday Night Firefight and other combat systems is the concept of a stun save. Damage isn't just a number to be tracked, but a measure of pain and trauma which affects your character. Whenever a character is hurt, they need to make a stun save by rolling a d10 and comparing it to their body statistic minus any penalty due to their wounds. If they roll equal to or under, you're fine. Otherwise, they've gone into shock and can't take an action until they've successfully rolled a stun save on a subsequent turn. Characters who are mortally wounded, by the way, don't make stun saves. They make death saves. We'll go over those in a bit. The bozo is only lightly wounded, which means he's just rolling against his body of eight for a stun save. He rolls a five and is fine. Seeing her shot did barely anything to the bozo, Brooks aims for the head. She hopes the clown's skull isn't made of metal. When you make a called shot, you take a negative 4 penalty to your skill check, but get to decide where the shot hits. This is especially important for headshots because those do double damage. To calculate headshot damage, first take the base damage and subtract any applicable armor SP from it, then multiply by 2, and finally, subtract body type modifier from that total. Brooks squeezes the trigger. Her d10 roll comes up a 3. She adds a reflex, 9, her handguns, 7, and a bonus for her smart link, 2, for a total of 21. She then subtracts the negative 4 penalty for the called shot. Her grand total is 17. That's still enough to beat the 15 difficulty. Once again, Brooks rolls 2d6 plus 1 for damage. The dice come up 3 and 6. Add a plus 1, and that's a total of 10 against the bozo's head, which is indeed unarmored. Worse, the damage for headshots is always doubled, which means the total is 20. Even subtracting negative 3 due to the bozo having a strong body type modifier means the clown takes 17 damage. This means it's time to look at a special rule. Whenever a character has a mortal wound, they make a death save. This works exactly like a stun save, except if they fail, they die. Even if they succeed, they're not out of the woods yet. They still have to succeed at a new death save at the start of their turn each round until they are either stabilized or die. Also, if a character suffers more than 8 points of damage to a specific body part, that body part is severely damaged, and the wounded character must make an immediate death save as if they possessed a mortal zero wound. Even if they beat the death save, they still have to make a stun save with their current wound level penalty in order to avoid shock. The one exception to this rule is headshots. If a character takes more than 8 points of damage to the head, they're dead. There's no role that saves you from getting your brains blown out of the back of your skull. That's exactly what happens to the bozo. 
Brooke's second shot splatters his gray matter across the wall. The clown is down, but she knows they travel on packs. She's worried his gangmates will have heard the shot, so she encourages Bouncer to hurry up with his hacking. They need to get out of there. We hope you enjoyed this video. Cyberpunk 2020 is available as a PDF from DriveThruRPG. It's available in physical form from our web store and from your local retailer. Thanks for watching, and stay safe on the streets.